Yes, my name is Usha Venkatraman. I'm a storyteller. I live in Mumbai and I have been telling stories, I think, since I was a young girl, concocting stories, getting away with stories, telling tall tales, right? Okay, I became a professional storyteller in 1996 and that's when my journey began. Uh, I was teaching at the Cathedral and John Conan Infant School where my children were studying and uh, it was a wonderful place uh, for a parent also to uh, exercise her creative um, juices, you know, and that's what I did. And I began my first story in the year 1996, the story about music, the story about melody and rhythm. And there was no turning back. So my practice field was the cathedral school. I have told stories in the infant school, in the junior, junior school, middle school, as well as the senior school where in 2007, when my children were in the senior school, we did a sound and light show on the 150th year of uh, the first war of independence. So it was the history lesson brought live through an audio visual medium of storytelling using puppets. So it was a sound and light show. Puppets were created by the school students and it was a wonderful um, story where we took the social changes or the social causes that led to the mutiny and we took two or three of the social causes and used the children to tell the story and to also work with puppets. So I have to say my practice ground was the cathedral school for over 10 to 12 years right from the beginning when my children started at the transition level up to 12th grade. And then I branched out and became independent. I had many other mothers to help me along the way who were a great support to me. And that's how I started the journey. And today, after 24, 25 years, I have set up Mumbai Storyteller Society it is a platform, it's an organization, a non-governmental setup where we promote the oral tradition among the community. It's not only for adults. We started initially, we thought we should tell stories to adults. So we have monthly meetups where we do tell stories. But children, audience of all age, right? So there is no... Um, I would say a limitation on the age, we tell stories to everyone, be it a senior citizen, be it uh, children, be it adults, um, anybody. So our monthly meetups are only for uh, adults. But we also had our first successful Mumbai International Storytelling Festival in January. And the theme was mythology, which was a great success. We had some international storytellers and uh, the theme mythology was selected because India's rich heritage, the cultural heritage and India's filled with myths and legends and epics and it was world mythology. So that was a wonderful thing. So with that behind us, we are forging ahead in these new times of lockup and uh, I also curated the first ever science storytelling festival, exploring science through stories. I collaborated with Lubaina Bandukwala and we had our first Saifari 2019 in October last year. We partnered with Nehru Science Center and this was a full day of storytelling for children aged 4 to 14 years. So we explored scientific concepts through stories. And that was a great success as well. We had over 1500 footfalls. And I have to thank 
Lubaina Bandukwala and Pika Book Children's Literature Festival for partnering with myself. And we plan to take this to all the cities in India, to the small uh, metropolis, not the big cities. Let's see. So that is about a brief introduction about myself. I am a classical vocalist. I am a self-taught puppeteer. I had my training in commerce in Mumbai University. I went on to do my personal management from Tata Institute of Social Sciences. I worked for a couple of years in the banking industry. Then I quit my job when I got married because all I wanted to do was raise children and tell them stories. And um, I continued with my studies. I did early childhood education way back in 1988 with Dr. Vijaya Murthy. And since then, there was no turning back. I knew this was the right profession for me. How to tell stories, how to bring about a transformation. And stories can do that. And stories are the most non-invasive way how you can transform people, right? So uh, that is a bit about myself. And then, like I said, my training ground was in cathedral school because my children joined school in 1996 and I was an active member of the Parent Teachers Association. And the school gave me the canvas. They gave me the platform to tell stories. So, and my first story, like I said, began with the concept of melody and rhythm. And that was a musical storytelling where I introduced the concept of Shruti and Laya with the help of puppets. So puppets became uh, my tools to teach these concepts in a very fun and engaging manner. And little did I realize that I had already started teaching math and music. And uh, I had no idea that I was already on to STEM education through puppets and stories. And it was such a big hit that I performed on Doordarshan with Preeti Sagar. I was invited to the American Library and, well, like they say, the rest was history. So here I am today with firstcry.com going live and on a virtual platform, which is something very uh, and not very easy for me because I'm used to facing people, you know, live face to face and looking at them and then talking. So this is a first. I guess one has to get used to this new stage in our lives, the lockdown. So <clears throat> Today's topic, as you know, is all about storytelling because that's what I can talk about. Uh, I know something about it and it's my own personal experience that I'm going to be talking. And the different stories that you can tell at the early years, it's like a startup kit that mothers, the caregivers, um, trainers, teachers, can use to engage children in a very creative and a stimulating uh, manner. Uh, it is very important to stimulate the imagination of the young child. So how do we do that? I had written a paper, Jungle Chat, Animals and Birds in Indian Children's Literature way back in 2014 and presented this at Singapore for this Asian Federation of Children's Content. So I'm going to borrow something from that paper and begin the evening. So let's start with a story. Once upon a time in China, there lived a monk. Now there was something different about this monk. He used to live, he used to live on the 
branch of the tree. He sat on the branches and he would sit there and meditate. Uh, so when he would meditate, he would meditate for days and birds started forming nests on his head and on his arms. So everyone began to call him bird's nest. They started making fun of him, but soon they realized that this man was very wise because people started to come to him to seek his wisdom, to seek his advice. One year, the wealthy governor of the land came to bird's nest to seek his advice. Now the governor came with his retinue of servants and soldiers and he reached bird's nest somewhere in say forenoon and he squinted his eyes and looked up towards the tree and saw bird's nest sitting there and he said bird's nest I am the governor of this land I have traveled far all morning to seek your counsel I want to know how I can be a better ruler I am very powerful I have wealth, but I'm not a very popular person in my land. How can I gain the respect of those who serve me? Asked the governor. For a while, there was silence up in the tree. Bird's nest remained silent. And then he spoke. The most important piece of advice that I can give you, governor, is to always do good. Don't do bad things. Always do good. Ha! Any four-year-old knows that. Bird's nest. Laughed the governor. Don't tell me I traveled all this distance to just hear that piece of street advice from you. I could get it from a four-year-old, said the governor. Bird's nest only smiled and said, a four-year-old may know it, governor, but an 80-year-old still finds it difficult to practice. This is the best advice that I can give you. So I think the tale is a fitting way to introduce today's topic, which is storytelling. Look at the present time. We are in lockdown. Children don't understand what it is to stay indoors, not to go out and play. I'm talking about the little toddlers, the young ones, the under five. How do, how do they cope in these times? The best way is to tell them stories. <clears throat> now we as adults know that intellectually what is wrong we have to maintain maintain social distancing we have to wash our hands we have to uh, keep uh, safe remain inside the house and follow the rules of lockdown but it requires a lot of positive role modeling and conscious attention to understanding the positive traits of a person or character so, when you are the role model for your child, the child looks at you. If you get angry and upset, the child is going to get angry and upset too. So, how can you bring about a positive change in your child? How can you just be good and do good? Stories give us that experience. Stories give us a vicarious experience, right? This is as close to the actual experience as you can get. Because the story engages us on so many levels and because of its logical flow, we can easily retain it in our memory and use it as needed. A story is really just a bunch of information organized in the form of a situation with characters that we can relate to, settings that we can envision, problems we want to know the answer to, and resolutions that give us hope. Stories 
are food for thought. So that is what we are going to do today. How do we tell stories to the young toddler, the young child? What does storytelling do? I think you've had a lot of speakers talk about stories and storytelling. So I can just tell you that stories develop the child's emotional development, intellectual development, communication, language, creative writing. It's the first step towards reading. Also builds concentration, imagination and emotional development. How does the emotional development take place? Through the story, the characters in the story who are emoting. And then the child begins to tell its own story. So let's put away all the theory aside and let's dive into the kind of stories that you can tell your young child. Today's topic is the early years startup kit. The first story that your child listens is a nursery rhyme, right? When a child is born, a mother starts singing, you start talking to your child and you may say a two-line nursery, uh, nursery rhyme or a song, right? So that is the first story that a child listens to. So let's start with a nursery rhyme as one of the early stories. Now everyone knows the nursery rhyme, row, row, row your boat right? How do you build language? How do you um, make it magical? So uh, here is the nursery rhyme. Um, maybe most of you know it, but bear with me and join me when I sing this song. Now you can use a puppet or a prop. Today I'm going to be using a puppet a little later, not right now. So let me go ahead and sing this song. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. If you see a crocodile, don't forget to scream. Now this is also a story which we call it as a choral story, a chorus where word to word the child can join you, right? Nursery rhymes are taught to children. So this is such a nursery rhyme that your child can join you and sing along with you, right? Then it goes row, row, Row your boat across the icy river. If you see a polar bear, don't forget to shiver. Row, row, row your boat just across the lake. If you hear a hissing sound, it's probably a snake. Row, row, row your boat gently to and fro. Watch out, give a shout. Into the water you go. Oops! Row, row, row your boat gently through the mist. If you see your mommy dear, don't forget to kiss. Row, row, row your boat gently to and fro. Merrily, 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 off to sleep we go. Right? There are many nursery rhymes like this. That is the early story that you can tell your child. Now I said we also come to choral stories where word to word the child repeats after you. Now this story can be a finger story. So I'm going to do a finger story is another story that you can tell and also which can be repeated word for word. So this is a West African finger story and it goes like this. It's using all the ten fingers. So you start with wiggling your little finger, the ring finger, 
the middle one, the pointer, the thumb. Do it on the other hand as well and shake all your fingers, lift them up and put them in your lap and rest them and then you begin the story. Okay, so the story goes, one day the little finger said, so this is to be repeated, one day the little finger said, I'm hungry. Why don't you cook? said the ring finger. Hey, I am the tallest. Yippee, said the middle finger. Now look here, we are talking food and not size, said the pointer. So again, you repeat that. You have this again. I'm hungry. Why don't you cook? Yippee, I'm the tallest. Now look here, we are talking food and not size. And the four fingers began to argue. They were talking and they were arguing and they were talking at the same time. So if you have a little, um, what would I say, a group of uh, infants, a toddler group, you could have them all in groups, in twos or threes, repeat each little thing. So everybody is talking at the same time. So they're making so much noise that the thumb stood up and said, too much noise, too much fight. See you later. Good night. Boink. So ever since then, children, the thumb has stayed away from the four fingers. So this is a choral story where you can repeat it word for word and have your children repeat that story after you. Right? It's also a finger story. So you are using the finger um, muscles, you know, moving. So it is challenging for the little ones, you know, to uh, copy your mirror uh, image. So they may use the left hand because when you so show your right hand to the person observing you, it will be the left hand. It's perfect. Don't ever correct your child. Let the child be. Let the child explore it with you. The child will comprehend. The child will understand as he grows up, as his development takes place. Right? So we don't have to run in and correct the child. So this is one story. And another one, a choral story, is there are many finger stories. Uh, I'm not going into it, so I'm going to give you a little window into the different stories. Now, this is the story about the old lady, right? Everyone knows this story. It's a song which you can ask your uh, child to repeat after you. So, this is slightly different, So, which I'm going to do with you. Bear with me. I just need to take my um, um, uh, I will sh I think there was a chat I will answer your question let me finish this story there was an old lady who swallowed a shell I don't know why she swallowed the shell she didn't tell okay here she can swallow the shell right now let's see in this story or a song language is also developing so you're fostering early literacy the early language there was an old lady who swallowed a crab oh why did she grab that crawling crab she swallowed the crab to catch the, she swallowed the crab to live in the shell. I don't know why she swallowed the shell. She didn't tell. There was an old lady who swallowed a fish. What a tickly dish, that swimming fish. Now just hear the words. What a tickly dish, the swimming fish. 
She swallowed the fish to catch the crab. It's also a chain story. She swallowed the fish to catch the crab. She swallowed the crab to live in the shell. I don't know why she swallowed the shell. She didn't tell. Let's see what else she swallows. There was an old lady who swallowed a seagull. Oh my God! It wasn't dull to swallow a seagull. She swallowed the seagull to scoop up the fish. Look at the language. She swallowed the fish to catch the crab. She swallowed the crab to live in the shell. I don't know why she swallowed the shell. She didn't tell. The old lady was still hungry, you see. There was an old lady who swallowed a pail. Yes, they are in the beach. She swallowed the pail. She didn't wail when she swallowed the pail. See the rhyming, wail and pail, right? She didn't wail when she swallowed the pail. She swallowed the pail to carry the gull. She swallowed the gull to scoop up the fish. She swallowed the fish to catch the crab. Ah, she swallowed the crab to live in the shell. I don't know why she swallowed the shell. She didn't tell. Shell and tell. There was an old lady who swallowed some sand. Of course, she had to. She was in the beach. Oh, how bland. The sand was very bland. To swallow the sand. She swallowed the sand. Let's see, why did she swallow? She swallowed the sand to fill up the pail. She swallowed the pail to carry the seagull. She swallowed the gull to scoop up the fish. She swallowed the fish to catch the crab. She swallowed the crab to live in the shell. I don't know why she swallowed the shell. She didn't tell. There was an old lady who swallowed a wave. Oh my God! Swallowing a wave was such a big hassle. Do you know what she did? That she suddenly burped up. And out came all the pail, the sand, the seagull, the crab, the fish and the shell. And you know what she did? She built a sand castle. So this is also a choral story. I would also say it is a chain story, a participatory story. So this is another type of story that you can engage with your youngsters. Now let me see uh, the chat. Very useful and good. Great. Um, do you want me to take a break and look at your questions or I thought I could do it in the last 15 minutes. We have another 15 minutes. Let me go to the different types of stories. I said another one is the participatory story. And before that, we also have rhythm and rhyme stories. Stories that rhyme. I think we've already done, this is one of the rhyme stories, right? Uh, where pale and wail. So there are different types of this old lady stories, right? The first one is, there was an old lady who swallowed a fly. But there's another version. There was an old lady who swallowed a bell. How it jingled and jangled and tickled as well. I don't know why she swallowed the bell. I wish she had tell. There was an old lady who swallowed some bows. Soft as the snow were those velvety bows. So there is another story about the old lady. There are many versions. Then you have the... 
the um, coyote story, which also goes in this chain story. So there are many versions, many stories that you can do. And I want to now talk about call and response stories. That is another type of story that's wonderful to engage where your audience is also participating with you. Because the idea is not just for you to tell the story. You want your children to also respond and participate. So a call and response is exactly what it means. So you call and then your audience respond. So one of the call and response stories which, I, which is a favorite of mine is a farm vacation. So once I decided to go to Uti for a farm vacation and we happened to uh, be in a homestay, we lived in the farm and the farmer asked me the day I arrived, Mrs. Venkatraman, Miss Usha, would you like to come to the barn, to the cow shed early in the morning tomorrow? And I said, of course, I have never lived in a farm. I've lived in Mumbai. So I said, of course, and I went to the barn, the shed, early in the morning at 5 a.m. And he said, Miss Usha, would you like to milk the cow with your right hand? And I said, yes. And I began to milk the cow with my right hand. So please join me in milking the cow with your right hand. The next day, the farmer said, Miss Usha, can you milk the cow with your left hand? Use both your hands and milk the cow. So please respond. I began to milk the cow with my right and left hand. The third day, the farmer said, Miss Usha, can you please kick the hay with your right foot? Okay, I'm sitting here, I, but I want you, wherever you are, to repeat the action. So milk the cow with your right and left hand as well as kick the hay with your right leg. All the actions are taking place at the same time. Then on the fourth day he said, Miss Usha, please can you kick the hay with your left foot? So all the four actions together. I am milking, I am also kicking with my right and left foot. It's a great way to have balance and it's great fun to do it in the classroom, right? And then in your play group or nursery or home school, wherever you are, or just a mother and child playing. And then on the fifth day, he said, Mrs. Venkatraman, there are flies here in the cow shed. Can you swat the flies with your head? So I said, fine. And I had to repeat all the five actions. I am milking the cow with my right and left hand and kicking the hay with my right and left foot and at the same time swatting the flies with my head. And on the sixth day he said, Oh Miss Usha, please close the cow shed door. Can you knock it with your backside, shut the door while you're milking? And I said, of course. And then I began to do that little dance for the cow, milking with the right and left, kicking the hay with my right and left foot, swatting the fly, as well as with my booty, trying to shut the door. And I said, Mr. Farmer, I think I look funny. Why are you making me dance like this, just to milk the cow? And the farmer laughed and said, Miss Usha, the cow loves for you to dance like this so that it can give you more milk and it loves to have a townie like you dance for it. And then I thanked him and of course I thanked the cow for allowing me to milk her and then I left for my city lights. So this is a call and response story there are many call and response stories that you can engage with your child. Okay, now let's go to the other kind of stories. The why stories. The poor poor stories. Why? Children, you imagine, you know, everyone knows a toddler's why never stops. 
Why should I stay at home? Why should I eat carrots? Why should I not switch on the TV? Why can't I play more? Why should I share? Why must I change my clothes? Why must I have a bath? So these are why stories, poor core stories, to answer their innumerable why, why, why. Right? There are plenty of why stories that you can tell your child. So, um, another, um, I come next to a participatory story. I might have shared this with you before on first cry. I don't know because I've been doing so many um, live sessions that I completely forget which story I told where. This is another wonderful story about that thing in the pond. Now, I won't tell you the story, but I'll tell you the lines which your audience can participate in, right? So this is a little rabbit who goes to the woods and has to walk through the woods and cross the pond on a fallen tree. And on the other side of the pond is the carrot patch. And he has to fetch carrots for tea. Because he's old enough, his mother says, little rabbit, I think you're ready to go and fetch carrots for tea. So little rabbit sets out. He walks a bit, slowly pat your knee, showing the walking motion. Okay, so this is a participatory where your audience can participate. He walks a bit, he skips a bit, right? Show the skipping or you can skip. If you're a young teacher, you can skip and jump and show skippity hop, skippity, skippity, skippity hop, right? You can skip. So skipped a little and ran a little where you can pat on your knees as well as, you know, drum your feet to the ground, right? And make that running noise. So this is the participatory refrain. He walked a bit, he ran a bit and he skipped a bit. So this keeps coming in the story because the rabbit meets the owl first and then he meets a fox and then a squirrel. So if you want to use a puppet here, you can bring in and he saw mother owl, right? And so mama owl says, where are you off to in such a hurry little rabbit? And little rabbit says, my mom says I can go to the carrot patch all by myself to fetch carrots for tea. And off he goes. So this is one of the participatory stories. There is also musical story. This is a wonderful musical story that Heather Forrest, a wonderful storyteller from the United States, lives in Long Island, New York and I've been seeing her virtually on screen every Thursday morning for the healing story um, conclave that we meet and she's a wonderful singer and I connect to storytellers who can sing. So this is a musical story. It's the story, the mitten story and Ukrainian folk tale. Most of you would know that. So it goes musically like this. So it is wonderful to engage your toddler, the little ones, the under six and under five with musical stories. So it goes on a cold and frosty day, a little boy went into the forest to pick woods, right? It was winter and little did he realize he had dropped the warm mitten his mother had knitted for him. He continued on his way and a small little mouse who was shivering in the cold saw that mitten lying on the forest floor and the little mouse called out, I'm frosty cold out here in the storm. I'm going to climb into that mitten where it's nice and warm. So the little mouse entered the mitten and the mitten it stretched. Along came a rabbit. The rabbit saw the mitten lying on the forest floor and the rabbit calls out, 
can I come in? I'm cold from the storm. Let me in, let me in, where it's nice and warm. So who's inside the mitten? The mouse. And the mouse says, come on in. And opens the door and calls out, there's always room for one more. There's always room for one more. It's a wonderful inclusive story that I not only tell young ones but I also tell this story to adults. And that is where I want to bring this point that no story is restricted. That you say, no, this is the prescription, this story is prescribed for a young child or this story is prescribed for an adult. There's nothing like that. When you tell a story to a young child, you use simple language. Keep it short because the attention span, concentration is limited. So that's how you adapt the story to a young child. Otherwise, any story can be told to a young child. Right? As long as you keep it simple and short. So th there are many musical stories. Everyone knows the stone soup. So that is also a lovely story like uh, uh, we are making stone soup, we are making stone soup, we are making stone soup today. It's gonna be delicious, nutritious and mm, absolutely lip smack smacking. Bring what you got and put it in the pot. Oh, bring what you got and put it in the pot. We are making stone soup. We are making stone soup. We are making stone soup today. So these are musical stories that you can tell. And children love such stories. Right? We spoke about choral stories. We spoke about chain stories, cumulative tales, call and response. A cumulative story is this happened, this happened, this happened, this happens. Right? We have a lot of chain stories or cumulative tales. Right? Uh, if you know the fat cat and the other story is about why mosquitoes buzz. So the mosquito bites this young boy, he drops his knife it almost falls on his mother's head. She steps back and she almost steps on a snake and the snake runs away, slithers through the long grass and goes up the tree. And when the rat sees the snake, the snake, the rat thinks that the snake has come to eat it and then she screeches and she frightens the parrot on the next tree. The parrot drops the, uh, the parrot squawks so uh, loudly that the monkey which is on the other tree you know screams and drops the bananas the bananas fall on the elephant's head and the elephant wakes up with a start and he thinks he's being charged and he rushes through the long grass and steps on the guinea fowl's nest breaking all her eggs right that is a cumulative tale children love such stories because they want you know they say hey what comes next right they know what comes next so that is a cumulative story and the next one that i'm going to tell you is a rap story right rap stories are great fun there are many kinds of rap stories the one i always use is the uh, the goldilocks and the rap story right so like we said we there are musical stories we go to rap story. So this is a little um, taste of the rap story where you can again tap your hands on the knees and ask your child to join with you. Once upon a time in the nursery rhyme, there were three bears, the papa, the mama and the wee bear. They went walking and talking in the woods when along came a little girl with long and flowing golden hair. Her name was Goldilocks. Ooh, ah, ooh, ah. She went knocking, but no one was there. She didn't care. Home from the woods came the three bears. Someone's been eating my porridge, said the papa bear, said the papa bear. 
home. From the woods came the three bears. Someone's been eating my porridge. Said the mama bear. Said the mama bear. Hey, mama bee bear. Said the little wee bear. Someone's broken my chair. Wee! Then Goldilocks woke up and broke up the party. She was out of there. She was out of there. Bye, 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 said the papa bear, said the papa bear. Bye, 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 said the mama bear, said the mama bear. Hey, mama bee bear, said the little wee bear. Bye, 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 bye. So that is the end of the rap story. You have many rap stories about the enormous turnip, the little red hen, right? So these are the different types of stories that you can tell your little toddler to keep their, to stimulate their mind, to keep their imagination going and developing your child emotionally, intellectually and promoting early literacy and also having fun. Storytelling is all about having fun, right? It's not, not just what are you doing with the story, right? So there is a difference between telling a story and reading a story. As a storyteller, I don't read from a book. The books are put, put away. Most of the stories that I tell were not even written in books. These are stories that I heard from storytellers because stories speak to a storyteller like me. So I only tell the stories that tell me Please tell my story, pass it on. And one of the storytellers ethics is we mention the name of the teller from whom uh, I heard the story and which I'm sharing. Like I told you, Heather Forrest's story about the mitten story where she's sung it musically. And then uh, even the stone soup is also her version of the stone soup which is wonderful which I use uh, when I visit schools when I engage with little ones right so I think uh, those are the kind of stories that I think I've covered uh, today that's the different kinds of stories rhyme and rhythm call and response poor poor stories why stories rap stories cumulative tales or chain stories, choral stories, participatory stories, and independent stories. You can also tell once upon a time, long, long ago, in a faraway land in India, there lived a king and queen. And the king was a very just king, wise. Everyone loved him. Well, the queen was rather vain and proud. Every year for Diwali, the queen asked the king, for an expensive gift and the king gave his queen whatever she asked for because he loved her right so there are independent stories also that you can tell your child and like I said the stories give the children vicarious pleasure right they can put themselves in the place of the character in the story okay now I would like to answer the questions um, okay, uh, Deepika, I think you asked me, kids like instant stories on what they have recently seen or watched. How do we build up? Okay, a good question. How would you build up that story? Now, if you have sat and listened to the stories with your young child, uh, you would also know, right? You would also retain that story. Uh, you would know what that story was about. So you may not remember the full story. So ask your child to kind of build it and then you can go around making up that story. Right? It is a creative process. It's fun. Try that. You can do it. You don't have to know the story verbatim. You can build on that story. You know, we are so used to learning in a linear manner.
that we never think laterally. I think let's now think outside the box. Let's have a lateral vision and build on the story. Hope I've answered your question. Akshara is asking, okay, Akshara, your son is three. I should not say magical fairy tale Mahabharata and all. Will it be hard on him? Not at all. Not at all, Akshara. Not at all. No story is hard or tough for a child. Let me tell you. Absolutely not. I was just listening to a, a wonderful podcast by um, Arshia Sattar. And Arshia here talks about uh, that you can tell any story to a child. Why do you treat a child like a child? She says, treat the adult, address the adult in the child, not the child in the child. And I totally agree. I tell scary, spooky stories because you want to build courage and confidence. You're not telling that story to frighten and children love scary, spooky stories. So if you want to tell tales from Mahabharata, why not? If it's an inspirational story, I think you need to, right? Why should we assume that children have to be taught? Why not just tell them a story for pleasure? They will figure it out. They will come up with their own answers, right? Why should we patronize children and decide that such and such story has to be told? And I love that and I totally agree with uh, Arshia Sattar here. And she says that if you, if your family lives with values, children will get a moral compass. You don't have to give the moral of a story and say the message of this story. Let the audience, your child, the listener, make an informed choice. Yes, what do you have to do? You have to engage with that child after the story is over and have a dialogue, a conversation, right? Talking about the story. And then that's how you'll figure out what is the informed choice or the information that has been comprehended by your child. I hope that answers your question, Akshara. And any other questions, let me look at the chat here. Mm. I can't see the chats. Any other questions that uh, you want to ask me here? There are 92 chats here. Hmm. What is your question? Anybody? I am unable to see that. No, I can't. Uh, Hmm. Is there any other uh, question for me? Okay. Is there any interactive way to tell my three and a half year old kid about how it rains? He always asks me, Mama, why does it rain? And I give him the same scientific reason which he doesn't get excited about or satisfies his question. Is there any interactive way to tell my three and a half year old about how it rains? Um, now this is a a porqua story as to how it rains. So if you 
definitely read up. You can talk about the uh, the cloud that's special. It's called the cumulus cumbus cloud, which is the rain bearing cloud, right? So you could make up a story and then say that it is so um, heavy with rains and that's how it rains. And you can sing here a song and also give him some scientific reason. Uh, why does it rain and give him some scientific which he doesn't get excited. If you make that scientific reason exciting, it will definitely entice him. So try that right and how do we decide how to narrate children's story from any book we pick rap way or musical way or any other form how do we decide um, now here's where you use your intuition uh, your understanding of the child give them variety variety is the spice of life you have to use variety when you engage with your child so tell different kinds of stories right because the attention span is wearing thin so even when i tell a story i have to jump from a participatory story to a call and response story to a rap story to a spooky story to a musical story right now charu asks uh, my toddler is 3.2 years he's not keen to listen to stories and also if i make him listen to stories through any like first cry series is coming up with but I think he's small to understand English language so how can it develop interest and in which way and language okay now here you can you don't have to tell a story see I'll tell you it's not great fun to listen to stories uh, you know on uh, live or on uh, Facebook or uh, virtually let me tell you uh, but still, how can you make it interesting, right? Now, when you're telling a story, create a very sacred space. Put a nice little cloth or a dupatta or a sheet. Sit down in that chair. Make it special. It has to be a particular time during the day or evening when you tell stories. And you sit there in the storyteller's special chair and make it a ritualistic thing. You know, you could start with Hindi. Sun lo sunati hu tumko kahani. You can start your story. You can start with Kazani le kar aaye hum. Kahani yo ka apne sang. Jo bachpan me sunte te. Na 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 ni ke sang sang. Nani ji kahani, sunao, sunao kahani. There are many ways to start a story. I usually sing. I take the children to a special story land, uh, a magical story land where we could be sitting under the story tree or we could be in a story land or we could be in an island and in front of us is a wonderful tree uh, which is a fairy tale or a kahani tree and which is carrying story eggs. So there are interesting ways to tell your story. Try that. Okay. And um, could you suggest some good books and sites for stories? Uh, I tell you in, uh, in the past couple of years, uh, Indian publication, uh, children's publication like Tulika, uh, Katha, and uh, Karadi Tales have come up with some wonderful stories. I actually began in 1996 with a Karadi tale about the monkey and the crocodile because it was musical. Remember? Na 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 Welcome to my puppets, the stories I will share of festivals and fees, music here and there. I'll tell you about festivals, Eid and Ganesh Chaturthi, Navratri and Diwali, Christmas and Eid. I'll tell you about animals, monkeys and horses. I'll tell you about friendship, love and harmony. From all these tales we'll discover through all our puppet friends the wit and ageless wisdom, the advice that they lend. 
na 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 so there you go karadi tales already started with the musical beginning setting the tone to tell a story right you create that magical space now dimple is asking me how to build rap stories so dimple you have to search for rap stories there are rap stories you can create there are rap stories for children like i said the goldilocks and the three bears rap stories for a teenager a little older kids you have to search there are books okay my daughter is 8 and 1/2 years what books do you suggest for her uh you can definitely uh, like i said tulika katha um karadi tales pratham books have some wonderful stories okay i am you could actually you know um kill me i hardly use indian books i don't know why because when i started in 1996 there wasn't good Uh, children's literature available for me the language and the content was always important and i found that in story books for children uh, in the west because the language was wonderful the way they start a story and how they build the story is truly magical you see it has to be magical for me but today you have wonderful stories uh, written by karadi tales you have uh, you know, tulika books have come up with some beautiful books katha has some lovely stories pratham has some wonderful science stories stem stories um, they are out there so please go uh, out and look for these books go to children's uh, book stores i can recommend kahani tree in prabha devi sangeeta uh, bansali she is the owner and she has wonderful books indian books right so you can and okay lakhani asks me i want to pursue storytelling how do i go about it okay um i want to tell you here that everyone is a storyteller now how do you find this innate talent in you for that you need to first tell stories start telling stories you need to practice a lot right it's practice which takes you uh, to where i am today and uh, because more and more stories you tell and we have the opportunity in india there are so many st- storytellers in mumbai itself in the past 4 to 5 years they have sprung like you know everywhere i can see hundreds of storytellers and <clears throat> some of them are new they have the confidence but they don't have the practice you need to practice the more stories you tell so i would say uh, practice if you want to learn the art of storytelling we have kathalaya in bangalore geeta ramanujam is one of the doyens of storytelling i too went to her in 2010 i was already a storyteller for over 15 years but when she told me that she runs kathalaya i met her in 2005 at one of the avic conference and i thought okay let me go and i was there for a week and um, i definitely learned something but it's my it's your take away from the workshop that matters and i've attended many master classes many storytelling workshops and i've taken away and today even today i'm learning a lot right every day is teaching you something your audience teaches you other storytellers teach you you have to observe learn adapt invent innovate reinvent yourself right like i'm reinventing myself for this virtual storytelling right and quite enjoying it but i don't know what is the response of my audience it is very important to know your audience's response because it always feeds the teller 
you got to know what is the response so uh, i think i've answered all the questions and my time is also up i hope uh, the session was informative and let me thank firstcry.com for uh, inviting me and ujwala who's been interacting with me thank you so much and have a great evening and enjoy stories and telling stories